Hello and we're back again with action potentials on biology basics. So here is the graph to show an action potential. You can see on this action potential we have a resting membrane potential of minus 70 millivolts. Then we go up to plus 50 millivolts, back down to just below minus 70 millivolts and back again to the resting potential. But how is this action potential actually generated? Well if we start with the resting potential the reason why it's minus 70 is because the inside of the neuron, which we will write down here, this is the inside, has fewer positive ions, so potassium, than outside, which has potassium and sodium. Now the sodium cannot enter this neuron, cannot get in because the membrane, remembering plasma membranes from your AS work, is impermeable to sodium, so the channels for sodium are all shut at the resting potential. However, there is a potassium leak channel, so potassium can actually leak out of the membrane. That's causing more positives to be on the outside than on the inside. So that's how the resting membrane potential is maintained at minus 70. If a mechanical um, impulse occurs, so for example, if you get uh, pressure on the skin or temperature on the skin or something along those lines that can cause a specialized sodium channel to open. If that sodium channel becomes open because there is a sodium ion gradient i.e. there's lots of sodium outside and not very many none at all in fact inside then the sodium will as we know from AS diffuse through that channel. So this is how um, an action potential is generated in a receptor cell. So once that happens, you have lots of sodium now in here. So that will cause the action potential to go from being minus 70 all the way up um, to reach threshold. Once threshold is reached at this uh, voltage, you get the opening of voltage-gated sodium channels. So that causes even more sodium ions to rush in because remember there's so much sodium up here and none at all, or very little now, in here. So the sodium ions enter down their potential gradient into the cell. We also can say that there is an electrochemical gradient. That basically just means that there's more positives outside than inside, and that again helps to cause more positive ions to come in because there's a gradient for positive to come inside the cell. So now we have open the sodium voltage-gated ion channels, so we have this part of the action potential occurring. Then we reach a high value up here, which is where you trigger the opening of potassium channels. And these are again voltage-gated potassium channels, so uh, this causes potassium now, because remember there was lots of potassium inside the cell, to come out. So now we're redressing the balance. We've had loads of positive coming in. That's made the action potential really positive. Now we open these voltage gated. And all that means is basically the gates are shut when the voltage isn't correct. And as soon as the voltage is the right one, they open. So they are voltage gated. The potassium rushes out. And that causes this action potential from, to go from being positive. Because we've lost all the positive out of the cell, it now becomes negative and in actual fact it overshoots and this is where we have the refractory period so the refractory period is basically the time when it isn't possible to generate another action potential and that's very important because if you've built up a load of sodium ions here what they can do is they will diffuse down their concentration gradient in this direction which is great but they might also diffuse in that direction and if they diffused in that direction then you'd set off the ion channels, the voltage gated ion channels that were over in this part of the cell. And as we go further down the cell, that would mean that the action potential wouldn't travel in one direction, it would travel in both directions. And that's no good because you'd spend your time going backwards and forwards and never getting the electrical impulse in the right direction. So that's why we really need an absolute refractory period. It's to prevent your action potential from going in more than one direction. Then we have what's called the relative refractory period. So by this point, you will have had sodium diffuse along the axon, and that will have caused more sodium ion channels to open. 
and you will get sodium coming in and this will set off another action potential. Note that in between the location of these channels there is um, a Schwann cell and that's basically insulating this axon. So that means that even though sodium will diffuse to this point it won't have any effect and won't cause an action potential to be generated because of this insulating nature of the Schwann cell. So this is basically uh, myelination. And myelination is just layers and layers and layers of the plasma membrane wrapped around this plasma membrane and so therefore prevents the diffusion and the changes in the voltage. So in fact we have a jump to the next place where we don't have any myelination and that's called saltatory conduction. So we have sodium then rushing in that's causing this action potential to go up. Once that happens then we have activation of your potassium ion channels so these are these voltage gated potassium channels so the potassium rushes out Na is coming in. That then again starts to diffuse along to the next position. Potassium's gone out and that has caused our action potential to come down. We have the um, refractory period, the absolute refractory period, the um, relative refractory period and then you'll notice we come back to the resting membrane potential. Now how is that happening? Well basically if we look back here we have our voltage gated sodium channels, they let it all in. Then we have our potassium channels, they let all the positive out. Now what we have here is a potassium and sodium pump. And what basically happens is all the potassium that's on the outside is bound back here. All the sodium that's on the inside is bound here. Then we have an ATP molecule that binds. That causes a shape change and we end up getting that inside and the sodium outside. And because you get three sodium out, the two potassium in, you can start to see already if we've got three pluses here and only two pluses here, again we're starting to get back to our negative membrane potential, which is basically less positives inside and more positives outside. So that's really restoring your resting membrane potential. So, in overview then, we have voltage-gated sodium channels, sodium comes in, voltage-gated potassium channels, potassium goes out, that causes an overshoot which prevents any um, activation of these guys which are back up in the wrong direction, we want our action potential to travel in this direction, so our sodium ions are diffusing down their concentration gradient along the axon, they pass by anywhere that is myelinated because they won't have any effect on there, but when they reach the next section, so when they reach here, they'll activate another sodium channel and so on and so forth. So we're all moving in this direction because of the diffusion of the sodium. And it's only one direction because, like we said before, of this refractory period. Okay, hope that helped. Good luck.